In today's video, I'm gonna show you in real time how you can draw this cute little cartoon orange using the iPad in Procreate. Also, if you follow along with any of my tutorial videos, post your work on Instagram or Twitter and tag me at BJ Dell. In upcoming videos, I'm gonna be showcasing artwork from viewers like you at the start, so here's your chance to get seen on the channel. These were the mushroom from my last video tutorial, but today's all about the orange, so let's get started. All right guys, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Starting out, I'm using a 3000 by 3000, 300 DPI canvas. It's an RGB canvas for my brush. I'm gonna start out sketching using my cartoon sketch pencil, which is part of my cartooning pack for Procreate. And once again, I've got the color palette pre-made, so if you wanna download the exact same colors that I'm using in today's tutorial to follow along, you can find that for free on my website. If you go to bjdell.com, Underneath the YouTube reference materials page, you'll find a link to that. Also a video at the top that walks you through how to install a palette and procreate if you've never done it before. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna begin with just black to sketch out here. And I'm just gonna start out with an oval in the center. We'll hold down our Apple pencil and our finger to lock it into a perfect circle. And then kind of use our arrow here just to get it a little bit more centered. So there's our base shape for the orange. This is gonna be a super easy, simple tutorial, as you can see starting out. Next up, let's go ahead and work at the top here. Let's do the stem. So we're just gonna draw an oval up here for the stem. Kind of have a little overlap here coming down. Then extend that down to the orange itself. Just kind of tapering it, narrowing it as it gets closer there to the bottom. Now let's throw a leaf in back here. So kind of have in the center here, the center part for the leaf, bring the top out and then back down and around for the bottom. There we go. Let's go ahead and work on the eyes next. So we'll just do some big eyes here. So let's just do, once again, a pretty big oval, lock it in for a circle here. And then Go ahead and do a pretty big oval here, circle for the pupil. Just drag and drop to fill that in. And an oval here, the iris as that comes around. And then from here, to make it easier, I'm just gonna grab my selection tool here with freehand selected. I'm just gonna trace around this eye. And then we'll just go ahead and copy and paste it. We come up here to the arrow, freeform selected. We'll just flip horizontally and bring it over to the right. Lock it in, and there we go. We've got a left eye, we've got a right eye. I'm gonna go in here and just maybe erase a little bit here. Actually, I'm gonna combine these layers so we're all in one now. I'm just gonna erase an oval in here and here just for that shine, the reflection in the eye. And we'll just do a couple of erases there for another kind of reflection. Going back in with the pencil now. Just kind of draw in some ovals there. Down for the mouth, let's just kind of do an open mouth here. And we'll kind of smirk to the side. Just bring that around. Oval at the bottom. Tongue in there. Kind of dimple here in the chin. And bring around a kind of curve line there. And then finally, we'll just throw in some eyebrows here. Just kind of block those in real quick. And there we go, there's our basic sketch. So from here then, we're ready to actually go in and ink this thing. So to do this, first thing I'm gonna do is come up here to my layers menu. I'm gonna make a new layer. It's gonna be our inks layer. And then for layer one, which is our sketch, I'm just gonna drop the opacity of this down to about 30%. We wanna see it, but we don't want it too dark. We're gonna draw on top of it. And then I'm gonna come back up here to my brush library and I'm gonna switch over to my standard inker streamline. We're still in that same pack here. 
I've got this kind of preset here to, I think it's around 8%. That's what I keep it set at. Which you'll get the same results here size-wise if you're using that 3000 by 3000 pixel canvas. So now that we've got that, we're ready to start on that layer two. So to begin with, I'm gonna go ahead and do the orange itself first. Just get an oval here. Once again, just holding down to lock it in. And that's pretty close to where we had our sketch. If we needed to move this around, we could go up here to the arrow again to transform it to, to bring it where we want it to be. And then from here, I'm gonna go ahead and start inking kind of up here at the top. I'm gonna have the light source on this coming in. Let's go ahead and go from the top left-hand corner, which means that the lines here on the backside are gonna be a little bit thicker. The orange itself, I just went ahead and made a solid kind of mono line, line weight here. But for the, the rest of it, I'm gonna kind of add in just a tad bit of line weight here. So anything closer to the light source is thinner lines, further away is gonna be thicker. And to get thicker, basically we just press harder. It's gonna be a thicker line here in the back. Bring this around, kind of taper it there. Go a little bit lighter on that line. Bring that line down. Get a thinner line here on the inside. Kind of thicker as we come up and around. Moving down now. Let's go ahead and do the mouth next. Thinner lines here. And taper there for that curve. Bring the bottom around and holding down will kind of lock in your shape. Zoom in here a little bit closer to the tongue so we can see it better. And I'm gonna have a thinner line tapering there at the bottom. Same thing here, we'll have tapers coming around and in there. With the tapers, it's basically just starting off with a lighter pressure and then letting up, or getting harder with the pressure as you go and then letting up pressure again there at the end. Same thing here, lighter presser, uh, lighter pressure starting out and then heavier as we go back to get that heavier line there in the back. All right, next up, let's do the eyes, but we're not gonna actually outline the eyes on the same thing. I kinda want the eyes to be split up. I don't want it to be a perfect circle here as we go around. So we're gonna start in with the base color first and then do the eyes after that. So this is a little bit different than doing everything all on the same layer for the reference line or inks. So to do this, we're gonna go ahead and set our line layer as reference. It's gonna allow us to drag and drop color then on a layer below it. So we need to come down here, make a new layer. Then we're gonna come up to our colors palette and select this orange, drag and drop this in. Now, of course, that covers up everything from our sketch layer. So we still want to see that. So we're going to bring the sketch layer then back above that orange layer. Okay, now for the eyes. Let's go ahead and come down to the orange layer here. We're going to make a new layer on top of that. And then once again, coming up here to the color palette, we're going to switch over to this kind of yellow color. That's what we're going to use for the eyes. Zoom in here just a tad bit. And we'll draw an oval, holding down to lock it into that circle. And drag and drop the color, which it's filling in everything because we still have reference turned on. So we need to come back to our layers menu and turn off reference for right now. And we'll turn it back on here in a little bit. And then drag and drop that in. All right, instead of having the perfect circle here, I'm gonna kind of distort it a little bit or warp it. So coming up to the arrow then, selects the eye color that we just did. We're gonna go ahead and warp this. And I want it to be just a little bit flatter here on the bottom. And then come up to a little bit more of a curve off to the side there. Just kind of like that right there. So that's gonna be the shape. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new layer on top of that one. We're gonna come back to our color palette, select our black again. We're still using that standard Inker Streamline brush. 
Like I said, I don't want to be a perfect circle around here. So we're gonna start off with a taper here, get heavier here at the top, kind of shows where the lid of the eye is and then taper then back around as we come down here. And for this, I'm gonna up the size of the brush to, let's go about 12% here. Bringing that down and then holding it down to where we can kind of adjust it a little bit. And then going back to the arrow, we can kind of manually man manipulate this now to get it to match up. Once again, with that warp selected, I'm just gonna bring it down here, just like that. Then with the eraser, I'm gonna use that standard anchor streamline. I'm just gonna kind of tighten up this taper at the end here. All right, so we've got the top of the eye there. Coming back in now with the brush, I'm gonna drop this back down to that 8%, and we're just gonna do kind of a line here around the bottom, pulling closer just so you can see it better. Just pulling a line here tapered around the bottom. Once again, using that eraser just to make this meet up a little bit. And now you can kind of see why I did it this way. We've got these gaps right here and right here, so, Drawing this, we couldn't have dropped in that color. It wouldn't have filled it in because it would have filled in everything else with those gaps. So instead of doing that, that's why we did these on two different layers with the, the eye color here. So we were able to kind of do that and have complete control over it. All right, so let's go ahead and get the rest of the eye done now. I'm gonna go ahead and make another new layer here. With the brush selected then. Draw an oval, lock it into the circle. Got a little spot there. Drag and drop the color there. Once again, position is wrong. We can grab the arrow. I'm gonna select uniform. We can kind of get it closer to what we had originally seen there. I'm gonna make another new layer here. With a lighter line here, we'll drag this around, lock it in. And then I'm gonna erase the overlaps here. With that done now, we can go ahead and pinch these two together to combine them. So these are all on one layer now. I'm gonna make another new layer on top of this for that little highlight there. And I'm gonna press fairly light on the screen here because I want this to be quite a bit smaller line weight than the rest. And actually, you know what? No, I'm gonna wait on that because we're gonna flip this. So hold on, let's not do that. Let's go ahead here and let's combine these two layers. So the eyes here are all on one. And then let's slide this one to the right. So these are both selected now. And we're gonna go ahead and group these. Now that these are grouped, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select that group. We're gonna slide that to the left and we're gonna duplicate it. So now we've got two of the same. With that new one selected then, we can go up here to our arrow and then we can flip horizontally and it's gonna select both of those layers because they're in a group. We're gonna bring that over to the side there to the right. So now we've got a left eye and we have the right eye. All right, now we can go in and do that circle that I had originally started before. So coming back down to this left side, we're gonna go ahead and make a new layer here. Once again, pressing very lightly on the screens, so we've got a thinner line there. And then now we can go back into this layer five and then we can erase those overlaps. So going back to the eraser, just gonna erase those. And now we're gonna come over to the right hand side. So layer five on the right then, we're gonna make a new layer on top of that. The brush here. A circle here and once again we're going to select that layer five and erase the overlaps just like that 
And now we can go ahead and also make a little erase circle there. And the same thing then on that layer five on the left, come in here and erase a little highlight there as well. All right, so the eyes there are done. We're gonna combine some layers now to kind of make these a little bit more manageable. So we're gonna combine both of the eye inks layers here. Also gonna hold down this one and drag it up. We're gonna combine those. And then let's go ahead and grab this eye color, drag it up, and we'll combine those. This new group now doesn't have anything in it, so we can slide that to the left and delete it. And we can go ahead and move this one out of that group and delete this one too. From here then, we can also go up here and combine the eye layer and the ink. So now we're back there. Actually, nope, that was the sketch layer. Hold on. Let's turn off that sketch layer or move it up to the top here, how about that? We'll combine those, so now the inks are all on one layer. Now, back to our inks layer here. Go ahead and grab the brush again, do the eyebrows here. Once again, have your line at the bottom to represent the shadow. Lighter as it comes up here at the top. And same thing over here on the side. Just kind of tapering it back in on the end there. Okay, so there we go. The outline's done now. Colors are started. Let's go ahead and turn off that sketch layer and you can see what we're left with. Now we can go ahead and finish coloring in the rest. We want to turn reference back on here on the lines layer. Coming back down to the orange layer then. We can go up here to our color palette. I'm going to choose the lighter green here for the top of the stem. Drag that in there. Darker green here for the stem itself and then the leaf. Next up we've got the pink, which we'll use for the tongue. Back up to the color palette, this darker kind of reddish color here. We'll use that for the inside of the mouth and then also for the eyebrows there. And then we just have to get the inside here colored in. So we're going to do this on a separate layer as well. So if we make a new layer here, and then we want to drag this on top of the eye color layer. So we're going to do the, the iris here. And then I've got this light blue here. Drag and drop this in. But as you can see, we've got this erased here. So we're gonna to have to actually go in here and color this in by hand. Since that gap is there, we can't use the drop, color drop with reference. And that's why we weren't able to use it on the eye either. Just follow this around. Now if we want to zoom in here to get a little bit more control, we might need to come in and erase a little bit. Of course, we don't want that blue showing through or the uh, eye color showing through on that blue so make sure you get all the way to the lines and there we go so our color flats are completely done from here let's work on the eyes a little bit make those pop out it's so coming up here to the layers menu again we'll do the white part of the eyes here first let's go ahead and select that and we're going to go ahead and turn on alpha lock this allows us to color in on this layer and it's only going to show up on the white parts here or the yellow parts coming up to the color palette then we've got this kind of goldish color we're going to use that and then coming in here closer we're just going to kind of pull this around this back side 
and down. Same thing here, kind of pulling it around the top where that lid's going to kind of show a shadow there. Just like that. Now, coming up here to our adjustments menu, I'm going to select Gaussian Blur. We're just going to slide this to the right ever so slightly. So we kind of have this fade going on there inside the eye. We're going to do the same thing now with the blue. So we're going to select that, alpha lock this. Coming up to the color palette, we've got this darker blue here. And we're just going to kind of pull around the bottom. Since this is alpha lock now, we don't have to worry about going outside of those lines there. It's going to keep it there with the blue. If we need to go back and kind of pull the colors out here, we can't use the eraser because we're on the same layer now. So if we would erase there, it would actually erase everything. It looks like I missed a little bit of that blue there. So if you see lines like that, what you'll have to do is you'll have to turn alpha lock back off. Fill in those lines and then turn it back on. Same thing here, just pull up some blue at the bottom. And around, once again, a little bit there I missed, so alpha lock off, back on. And then turn it back on here. We're gonna go up here to adjustments, same thing, Gaussian blur. Slide that to the right. It looks pretty good. Reference is still on here, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer. I'm gonna select white from my color palette and drag and drop the white into those reflections. It looks like here things are a little bit off still, so if I use that darker blue and I turn alpha lock back off, I can line that up a little bit better there. All right, looks good. Now let's continue on with the shadows on the rest of the piece here. So I'm gonna come up to my color palette. I'm gonna choose this kind of reddish color here. That's gonna be the shadow color for the orange. Coming back up to layers. I'm gonna come down to my layer three, which is the orange and the green colors. We'll make a new layer here. I'm gonna tap this and set it as clipping mask. So this is only going to show up on the parts that are colored in here. Works kind of like alpha lock, just a separate layer. So if we need to erase, we can erase. We don't have to select that same base color. Like I said, light source coming in from here. So shadows are going to kind of fall on this backside. We'll just bring in kind of a curve line there. I am going to turn off reference now on the lines layer so I can connect these big pieces of the shadow. Just need to make sure you click back on the shadow layer here. So we'll connect these large areas and then just drag and drop that color in there. I'm just gonna kind of follow around areas that will be shaded in here. Once again, once we have a pretty big area completed and connected, we can drag and drop the color, just like that. Pull up and around the eye into the eyebrow. Connect that back in here. I think I'm gonna pull this down a little bit more too into the eyebrow itself. All right, there we go. And I'm just gonna erase the overlap there with the eyebrow. I don't want it on top of the eyebrow. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and do the same thing here on top of this eye. I like to do this just to make the eyes pop out a little bit more and give weight to the eyelid and then also that area underneath the, the eyebrow. Throw that in there. And then moving up to the stem then, let's go ahead and select this dark green from our color palette. Pull this around the bottom of this, the uh, leaf here in the back, and on the back side of the stem. Also kind of continue this around that center piece there. We 
we go. Around the bottom here. And then back down. And here, if you overlap, we just need to select that other color that we started with down here. Just knock that back in. Want a little bit better curve there. All right. I think that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and select the green, darker green of the leaf and the stem just to do the top here. Don't want the uh, exact same shadow as that bottom. I don't want it to blend in too much. All right, pulling back down, you can see what we're left with. Finally, this darker pink, we're just gonna use that on the tongue. We'll zoom in here and just taper this down and around. Just like that. All right, now let's go ahead and do a little bit of the highlights. Just erase these overlaps that I've got here. Kind of clean some stuff up. One thing I try not to do too much on my videos is a bunch of zooming in and out really quick. So if you're doing this at home, I really, really suggest you constantly zoom in and out. The further you get in, the less times you're gonna have little mess ups like that because you're gonna be able to see them right away. All right, so back to the color palette. I'm gonna choose the color that we use for the eyes here. We'll use that as kind of a really hard, harsh highlight. So we'll make a new layer. And tap that once again set that as clipping mask and it clips down to the orange there zooming in here so we can see a little bit better let's do a highlight around the front there a little bit coming down the front of the stem here i don't want to go too crazy with these do some on the eyebrow here and here Maybe a little bit here on the mouth. As it comes around, I'm going to zoom in a little bit further here so we can see better. Well, there. And then finally, a little bit here on the side. I think that looks good. Last thing I'm going to do then, coming back up here to the color palette, we're going to grab the black. I'm just going to add some dots and some textures. So back to our lines layer here, and throw in some dots here for that orange texture. Pressing down harder to get a bigger dot, lighter to get a smaller dot. And then if we wanted to add some kind of hash marks up here, the leaf's got a little bit. You can do that as well. And finally, let's go ahead and add just a little bit of a drop shadow here. I'm not going to mess around with the background, but we'll at least do a shadow here underneath. So making a new layer, dragging it to the bottom underneath everything here. And then for the color, let's go ahead and use that reddish brown here. And we'll just draw an oval off to the side, kind of flat and elongated, and drag and drop the color in there. And then we want this to line up with the bottom. So if you need to use the arrow again, you can just kind of warp this and drag it out so it matches up. We'll erase here on the side. And then finally up here, layers menu and N for blend mode. Just drop the opacity down so it's not super dark. There's that. And then I'm going to make a new layer. And then finally just come down here. Zoom in with my brush selected. And sign this. And we will be done. So there we go. Quick little tutorial doing a cute little orange using 
of course, iPad and Procreate. Appreciate you guys watching. If you did enjoy today's video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment, let me know what you thought. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos. Like I said at the beginning of the video too, if you take part in any of these tutorials, you do a design following along with the video, I definitely wanna see it and you have your chance to be featured in an upcoming video. Uh, if you post your artwork. So if you're on Instagram or Twitter, tag me at BJ Dell so I can check it out. And that's it for today's video. So as always, once again, thanks for watching. And until next time, keep creating.